Hello everybody, my name is Shretex and welcome back to Victoria 3. We are met by a beautiful little music track here and we get to carry on our beautiful game as Columbia. Now, I have two objectives for this uh, episode everybody. I'm going to try and do objectives each time so you can see my overall thought process of what we're trying to do. So, last episode we kind of introduced the game and we got ready what we were trying to um, set up and the basic objectives. But, today I want to do two things. I want to get myself... 20, at least 20 production speed, which is going to cost like, I don't know, an extra £5,000 per week in income. So yeah, we need to make more, more money first. And also, I want to get myself at least 15 or 30,000 uh, soldiers. They will also have to be equipped with at least, let's have a look at it, the best technology we have available. So mobile artillery, which means we need to get a lot of cannons and also line infantry so they can get some guns. Now, with these two things, if we can achieve them, we'll probably move into some other things afterwards. But I, I really want to try and do that so we can get fast building speeds. And also, if we have a military, maybe able to start nibbling on some of our neighbours. I mean, especially Central America looks pretty tasty to me. There's a lot of small nations which aren't really going to be able to defend themselves. Wait, there's two El Salvadors. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> It's not a problem. If you actually got a keen eye, by the way, you probably would have noticed that the, get the start of the uh, the game, this actually used to be Central and uh, United Central America States thing. It's not like that. <laughs> but they fell apart at the start of the game. It's pretty interesting. Anyway, let's press play. Now, first things first, let's try and get ourselves up to having more production speed. Now, we did go talk about this yesterday, but we currently need to try and balance out the cost of the re materials required. So we need more tools. Uh, so we're going to immediately queue up an additional tool uh, factory. So a quick look actually. We probably also need to get ourselves some more wood as well to offset the additional costs, which we've already planned for. It's like I'm a genius or I'm just semi-competent. <laughs> One of the two, who really knows? Anyway, to get that started out. Also, we are still increasing relations with most of our neighbors. So a quick look at information. It seems that we have uh, some friends in the world these days. Some other nations actually increase relations with me directly. And I've increased them, I've done it myself as well. Now, we still have a problem that Brazil made us decide to murder us at some point. But as long as we keep trying to increase relations with them, hopefully it be okay. <laughs> and what's their current? Oh, they're currently belligerent. Which means that they may kill me at some point in the future. But it'll be fine. Besides, if we actually increase our military to be higher, like 30,000 men. Um, with the best technology available, they may actually back off because it would be too costly to try and kill us. They go for like Ecuador instead, or like Bolivia. You never know. Anyway, so I actually think from yesterday, I'm trying to finish my original campaign of trying to get rid of all the import routes in our country. Now, we are currently building a shipyard in Panama, which should produce, I think it's 25 clippers. The problem, one of the things I want to point out about this game, by the way, is that until you built a building, it's actually kind of hard to figure out what the building does <laughs> in terms of numbers. So, for instance, that we're building this, it's going to produce some kind of clippers. I can't tell from this how many clippers there will be produced because it just says nothing because there's no population working there. There's no statistics. So anyway, that's one of my little nitpicks there. But once it's finished, I think it produces 25 clippers, which means we're going to have way too many clippers. We, we need five at the market currently. Is it five? Yes, we only need five for our entire nation. So we have an extra 20 doing absolutely nothing. But luckily for us, there is fishing. So if I go and have a look around quickly, we can see that we've already got one fishing uh, wharf set up. And if I give it five clippers per building, I get 25 more fish, which helps our food situation. So... Let's have a quick look around, shall we? I want to increase the amount of fisheries. Now, I'm pretty sure this shipyard is equivalent to two infrastructure. So we will have slots for four more afterwards. Yes, that's good enough for me. I thought I built a coal mine here. I built it over here and said, so, never mind. So what we'll do, we'll queue up an additional three fisheries. And that would hopefully mean that we can use all the clippers we're producing and also get ourselves more food, making the market more stable. Um, oh, I just pressed the wrong button there. My bad. Oh, it's ready. Let's have a quick test, shall we? 35 clippers. I was way off, everybody. I. <laughs> we need more. In that case, then, let's build one more additional wharf here. Because we've got to bear in mind, we don't go, do not want to go over the capacity for infrastructure. And we can also put... Oh, we're running out of infrastructure. It's a bit scary, actually. We have gone over it slightly in our uh, main location. What, what name is this? <laughs> we call it Kund. 
The place of Kund, the capital of our glorious empire. So as it's only 95%, we are making a little bit of a loss when it comes to importing, exporting resources from this region, but it should be fine. We probably don't want to build anything else here though. Actually, I'll tell you what, what we can do, as we are making some money, if I remove tobacco tax, which is going to make us have a little bit less of money here, I can actually implement a state objective. So you can do this in any state in the game. You can do various things which cost um, authority, and they do various things. So one of them, for instance, is road maintenance, which gives you 25% more infrastructure and also makes building more efficient in this region. There's all stuff like tax, uh, welfare payment increases, education. Uh, you can increase pretty much every industry you can think of and increase migration or training rates in war. So there's a lot of useful things you can do here. But for now, we are going to implement road maintenance on our capital state because we need to try and fix it with railways. So if we just go into here and we also queue up at some point a steel mill and a motor industry, hopefully... By the time they are finished, we will have railways unlocked and we can build railways that will increase our infrastructure. Problem solved. Anyway, so that's the thing over there. So I need to actually increase the amount of fish wharfs we have. Let's build... Hmm, let's build two here. That should mean... We have 30... Oh, that's too many. There you go. That should be enough. Yes. So that means we should have six fisheries costing a total of 30 clippers and one dock costing a total of five. So it would be the equivalent of the factory's production. Sorted. Ah, also, cancel the route. Awesome. Now, we actually have quite a lot of um, bureaucracy left over, which actually increases my state construction speed a little bit. But also, we could use this to do a few things, such as getting more trade routes or increasing institutions. I think we kind of skimmed over this last episode, but I actually unlocked law enforcement, which does uh, radical reduction and terminal reduction. I'm going to increase this to maximum because the less radicals we have, the more stable my country will be. So we're going to get that to maximum. It's going to cost us... Uh, does it tell you, by the way? Wait a minute, let's have a quick look. It doesn't tell you. So every time this levels up, it will cost more and more uh, bureaucracy per your population total. So it's gonna eventually going to probably get rid of all this plus, and it, we're just going to be left with um, probably like a more equal rating there. Anyway, so we'll get that started, and it'll go as, over time. 201 weeks to get to maximum level. That's a long time. <laughs> so it's more of a slow burner. It means you can't quickly change things if you want to um, like micromanage your economy. You have to make it let, let it take time. Anyway, let's have a look. So that's happy. I'm happy with that. In the interim... Is there anything we need urgently? We can we need green and clothes. Interesting. Now there were a few things that we were doing last episode which I kind of glossed over. For, for instance, we do need more tools, that's sure, but we also already have some textile mills and some furniture factories. Now I did not actually upgrade them. So we actually can increase the amount of furniture produced in these locations if we go over to leafs, but that costs more tools. And also on the other side here, we have dye workshops, which include adding dye into clothing, making more clothes, but it requires a new resource. What's this? Devout scandal. I'm so this guy is just getting ravaged by me. All the events are like, just take this man down. <laughs> Jose must be destroyed. Um, why would I make Jose resign if he's got negative 50 popularity? No, 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 no. We will ignore this scandal and he will become even more unpopular. <laughs> This poor guy. Unfortunately, because of um how the political parties work, some are just going to be against you. If I was trying to make a the, the kingdom of God playing the papal states, I want to make, make the Catholic Church as powerful as possible. But as we're going for the reverse, we want to make them as weak as possible. So it depends on what you're trying to do in your country, depending on who your allies are going to be. Oh, nice. Mechanical tools. Okay, I'm going to quickly pause and we're going to start doing railways. <gasps> I'm pretty sure we did a thing last week, which we should have got an extra 2,000 research into railways. I don't know if that's a bug or not, actually, because I'm pretty sure... Ah, I think... I know why, I know why. So we couldn't actually use this technology yet because mechanical tools are unlocked. So I guess because it wasn't actually viable to make, it didn't, I didn't get any increase in research. If I picked water tube boiler, I would have had some free technology. So I kind of messed up there, but it's fine. Anyway, so... This allows us to get some more advanced tools going. So it actually increases furniture manufacturers, so we can get superpowers 
precision tools. <laughs> so basically, it means that you can have a very, very efficient version of creating luxury goods in the workshop. We've also got steel tools. So if we actually have steel, we would get plus 20 uh, tools on what we have right now. And it would cost less iron, but we would need steel. This is a way more efficient way of making tools, by the way. So it's something we need to move towards as soon as possible. And also slaughterhouses for livestock ranches, which increases the amount of meat you get. Done. I like how I missed the paper mill one there, but don't worry about it. I forgot I was doing a 5% chance of cultural exclusion. Oh! It's increased the chance by 10%. <laughs> so, so far we've had less, t we've failed making it 10% less likely, and then we've succeeded making it 10% more likely. Great. <laughs> what if it just keeps going forever? It just continually cycles backwards and forwards between plus 10 and plus uh, negative 10. That'd be pretty weird. Anyway. So in a second, this should hopefully help our economy quite a bit. As we get more tools, it should mean that a lot of our prices go down for various things we're currently doing. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with everything that's happening right now. Oh, do you know what I forgot to do? Fishing trawlers. Let's start using those clippers. Now, we currently, you saw earlier, we actually have a deficit for grain, which is not great. But by increasing other food goods such as fish, it should hopefully reduce the need for grain because there's more food available. Which should be pretty handy for us. Ooh, authority! We are going to do nothing with the authority. Ah, should we? I'm putting this back on. I want to increase the... Because I want to get fast clutcher speed, right? We'll put some tax on for now until we get what we need at the start of the episode. Uh, my, my two goals. Okay, so in a second, these guys should start producing fish as well. And if we look at fish now, they're already making way more money than before. And hopefully, it should have actually done a very small reduction in the cost of grain. Which we can't even see, so I guess it didn't do that much damage. <laughs> but it's, it's okay, whatever. Oh, interesting. We're actually not selling much wine at all. Hmm. We'll leave it be. When people get richer, because our quality of living is quite low right now, people will start buying wine anyway. So we'll leave that be. Fish. Well, that... Oh, wait. Where do they build it? Oh, over here. Sorry. <laughs> Excellent. More buildings are being filled up. That's what I want to see. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Okay, so how much is it going to cost me, do you reckon, to get an additional construction yard right now? It's going to cost £6,000 a week estimated at the moment. Um, and we're already going to have a problem with probably fabrics and wood. We probably should deal with the wood right now. So did I not queue up? I did queue up this. So we're already going to need more wood. But also in the future, I want to switch over this furniture factory to create position tools to get luxury furniture, uh, which means we're going to need 40 hardwood. So we're actually going to increase the... Oh, this one's over capacity as well. Oh, no. We really, really need to get <laughs> um, railways, everybody. Let's just do it this way. We'll put one here. And do we have more room for something else? We do. That should equal out to plus 40 hardwood. And when they're finished, we will switch on the production for furnitures. Now, I do notice that we also want to increase textiles as well. But we haven't got any dyes right now. Can we make dyes here? We can. Though, unfortunately, as we have absolutely zero capacity for more buildings, because we're pretty much capped out on infrastructure. Actually, can I put one here? No, I can't. This does not produce dyes, this region. Damn it. I guess what we could do in the interim then, let's just uh, put this over right now and we will import dyes from another country. Uh, we will do it from Mexico. As I got loads of bureau um, additional bureaucracy, we can just do it without much problem. Perfect. They're now making more money. I'm making more money. Everyone's happy. So what I'm probably going to do in the future, by the way, is I'm probably going to keep furniture and textiles in my capital but only for luxury goods. We'll probably make an additional cl um, cluster of basic production elsewhere. So I'll probably have like furniture here and like I'll put clothes here. The main reason being that you want to try and balance out having a lot of basic materials such as basic furniture and clothing while also producing enough um, 
luxury goods at the same time. But there would be a bit of a de uh, difference where there would be requirements for more basic goods than there would be for luxury goods because of how the economy works. Okay. Uh, also, let's increase this to laves because we actually have more tools now. It should hopefully pay off with the income there. You hope so anyway. Cool, that's working out. Good news for us. And we're already making a lot of fish as well. We're actually building stuff quite quickly. This is why I was saying why it's really important to get yourself uh, fast construction speed. Because otherwise you're going to get left behind. Or spend literally hours doing nothing. Oh, turmoil! This is because we have too many radicals in this location. We actually get turmoil when it goes above 25%. So you can see right here, it's currently giving us negative 30% migration attraction. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> and I think it says negative 15% tax there. Uh, that is affected by the amount of radicals in the zone. If their standard of living decreases or they're discriminated against, it, they will become a radical. If it improves, there's a chance they might become a loyalist, which is the inverse, which improves the, um, the happiness of a faction. Or, in this case, reduces it. Brazil was improving relations with us. Oh, they've become protective. That means that they think they can try and make me into a vassal. <laughs> Which is okay, I guess. Whatever. Uh, at least they're not going to try and kill me. Okay, next step for us, though. It looks like we're going to be steaming towards getting steel mills. I feel like, just to speed things up a little bit faster, we're going to immediately invest in the additional construction sector. Now, what I have noticed, by the way, um, while playing the game for the last few days, is that construction speed is normally capped out at 20, I've noticed. But depending on, like, the construction speed modifiers, the one we saw earlier, this one, say construction efficiency, it can be faster or more efficient in any capacity. So... We will build that right away, and then we will start building every building in the game at maximum speed. So you may notice as well is that different buildings have different infrastructure um, requirements and also have different build costs as well. So this steel mill, for instance, requires 450 construction progress, where a logging camp only requires 150. So there's a big difference there in what you're trying to build. Okay, we still need one more fishing lodge uh, wharf over here. How, now that we've built all these fisheries, can we see if it's made a reduction in... Yeah, there you go. It's reduced the demand for grain. See? It, oh, it's economy, everybody. It's economy. It all works out in the end. Ah, we are making losing a little bit of money now. But to be fair, that's not that bad. <laughs> I think by the time we get these additional buildings up and running, we should probably offset it with growth. Well, I hope so, anyway. The next stage I want to do, though, is going to be increasing the size of the military now that we've got 20 um, construction speed. Now, as I mentioned, it's probably going to cost us a lot of money. So if we go and have a look right now, we have 15,000 barracks. It's going to cost an extra two grand, as I say, two grand for line infantry and an additional two grand for mobile artillery. So quite expensive, both of them. We definitely can't afford it right now. I'm actually going to, when we can... Ah, we have to do... Ah. It's going to take a little bit of time, but we're going to have to build our own arms, in my opinion. So we'll start making an arms factory at some point so we can make our own guns and artillery, and we can go from there. But before that, because we've got issues with our infrastructure being capped out at the moment, we need to make sure we get the steel mills and motors finished. Oh, cool. A more efficient way of making guns. So that we can actually build railways everywhere to offset the negatives from having too much uh, infrastructure in our locations. What's this? Expensive goods, wood. I I know. I know, game. I know. I've already accounted for that. It's not a problem. How are we going to do... I'm going to put this at the bottom. Mostly because we haven't unlocked the technology for railways yet. So it's kind of pointless building it right away just to sit there doing nothing. But still, we can definitely use right away. So when this fills up, I'm actually going to enable... Steel tools, which should give us an extra 40 tools, uh, but it will mean that we need 40 steel. I think a steel mill creates 60? 65 at this point. So it's actually quite interesting if you notice it, by the way. So this building is going to require 40 iron and 30 coal, where to switch over this construction speed thing here, we will gain an extra 40 iron. So it kind of offsets itself while being more efficient. Once again, it's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, yes. I would like that, please. Thank you very much. 
That will create demand for the steel mills. Though I feel like we may have a little bit of an issue here where there's not going to be enough coal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we haven't got enough coal. And we can't really fix it because it will go over capacity. Damn it. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it, everybody. Don't worry about it. Also, this is over capacity now as well. At least before you get railways, you're kind of limited on where you start in the game. Ah! Ah! If we build additional ports, we will gain five infrastructure from the port building. So we'll clear that up and we will fix the coal probably before, if, before building the railways. Done. So ports increase infrastructure in a region. Where is our port? There it is. And also they give you convoys which you require for military purposes and also for trade. Though as we're not really doing anything for trade right now, it's not used that much. So for instance, if we wanted to, we can actually export our coffee to somebody to increase the productivity of those buildings. So let's just say import coffee to America. And that would just give us more money. I guess we got a coffee plantation somewhere. Yes, over here. So at the moment, they weren't actually making much money because there wasn't much product, uh, product demand. But now they're making loads of money. <laughs> Sorted. Awesome. Nice. We actually have too much food, which is quite good, actually. It means that we've pretty much met the basic food supply um, for our nation. Give me that wood. So this is what I was on about yesterday, where um, because, unfortunately, there's no one buying hardwood, it kind of limits the amount of money this building can make unless both resources are kind of met with high demand. But like I mentioned earlier, though, uh, we are going to plan on doing this. I might for now put this on the smaller version, so we start making some luxury goods. And then when we get more of the logging camp set up, we will switch over to the highest version. So, of course, this is also going to increase the demand for furniture, but it is what it is. What is this? Proposal for the defensive pack. Ooh. Who's this? What's... Ah. I'm not going to lie, everybody. Um, I plan on killing these people. <laughs> so, no. I would like to get a good alliance at some point, though. So, we're actually going to increase the relations with Mexico and Bolivia. So I know for a fact that we're going to have problems with Brazil at some point. So if I try and get an ally that can help me in my diplomatic plays, it'd be great. I actually intend to go north first, so and take over this region here, and then we're going to attack the main area. So I want to get more power before we go and fight Brazil. What's this? Ah, this one's a bit... I think this is because I'm playing an early uh, pre-release build. It says here, if you ignore it, a newspaper called uh, Panama Daily has printed a bigoted article about the Caribbean people. If I ignore it, it doesn't have a timeout clause for how long this negative modifier will last. So I'm never going to pick this because it may last forever. <laughs> Can you see my dilemma there? So uh, I'm going to suppress it instead, which means we get less authority for five years time. But at least after five years time, I'll get my authority back. I don't want to permanently have a region with negative modifiers, because I feel like that would be uh, just not fair. <laughs> anyway, apart from all that, how is it going, guys? We have two logging camps now. We've already fixed the problem with wood by looks of it. Well, we're about to anyway. And our furniture manufactory is making some money. Now, because a lot of our people are still poor, we're not selling a lot of furniture anyway. But what we can do in the interim is we can export it to another country. So what we're probably going to do... Um, do I want to do it now? Yeah, we do, we do it now. It's fine. Plus 873 luxury furniture, which is a lot. We are going to export this to another country. Let's have a look. So Brazil also wants luxury furniture, but I'm not going to do that. We are going to sell it to America. The reason I keep picking America, by the way, is that if a country, a major power, is reliant on your exports or imports, they are less likely to try and kill you. So I'm kind of guaranteeing in the future that America won't try and murder me at some point. It's a, that's a power anyway. Now this is causing a little bit of problems with tax waste, which is not good for our little income here. But I think we can probably easily fix that by... Wait. I'm exporting coffee, which is fine. Um, hmm. 
what we will do then, because I don't want to lose 9 to 10% of my tax. Let's import paper. It's going to cost a little bit more money, but I can switch this over here. Import paper. Ah, none of these are actually profitable. We do anyway. <laughs> okay, we need more. Wait. Ah, oh, because I, I need to offset the trade route costs with additional. There you go. That worked out. Cool. Contagious Disease Act. What is this one? Ah. Same thing as I just mentioned. Oh, oh this one actually is different. It says I permanently lose two standard living for the low strata in my capital location. Why would I pick this? I'll just take negative five interest group approval for five years. Why would I permanently make my nation worse? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, oh, do you want a permanent debuff that never goes away? No. No, I do not. It's a terrible idea. Okay, we're actually doing pretty well. So if you kind of notice throughout the episode here, we've increased the construction speed already and we actually offset it. <gasps> Railways have arrived. That is going to be great for us. Let's go for water tube board. Oh, yes. This is an additional upgrade for all our mines once again. So they become even better than before. So for instance, this will make this give me an additional 20 coal again. So three times efficiency of a regular coal mine without anything. And we just get more stuff again. It's perfect. Turmoil again has appeared. That's not great. So now that we're going to be building up our situation with railways, I'm pretty sure this building here makes 40 railway, uh, 40 engines. Oh, handy. I'll take it. This is quite interesting, by the way, competitiveness. It basically means that you have like a higher profit margin, so you can import more with the same trade route. God's will. Ferrado of the Catholic Church has been, as Paul's while doing events, seen preaching in favour of the Conservative Party, convinced that their victory has been foreseen in God's plan. Okay, so we can let them do that so they get more support. We can hurt them, hurting his reputation, or we can let the Liberal Party... I'm going to hurt his reputation again, because like I said earlier, we want to keep these guys placated and weak so that we can actually uh, do laws we want to see in the country. I like how I'm still doing this. Oh, it's actually happened. I was joking earlier. We actually have had a situation where it's plus 10, negative 10. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it, everybody. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Cool. We have our port up and running, which means we should get an extra little bit of extra infrastructure so we can afford to build an additional coal mine. Import demand for clothes and potential exports. We probably should do this as well while we're waiting. Let's export to the... Hmm. Let's do it to the Americans again. So what you can do, by the way, diplomacy... Ah, oh, it's not available. There is a bunch of stuff you can do. I don't know why I clapped in front of the mic there. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can do quite a few things. That's horse, at least. Something's happening. You can do quite a few diplomatic things with any country. So you can see right here, this is the options available if they are friendly. Uh, you can see that you can improve relations, you can take on their debts, you can have obligations, which means you can kind of like force them to do something they wouldn't normally do. Uh, alliances, defense packs, rivalries, embargoes, uh, trade agreements, custom unions, loads of different things. Trade agreements are great. It eliminates all tariffs from each other's country's trading and also removes the cost of maintaining a trade route with um, the bureaucracy. So this would be very, very powerful if we can get a trade agreement with America. And actually, wow, negative two. That's amazing. So we're actually really, really close already um, to getting a trade deal, which should save me a lot of points. And we can have a very nice free throwing trade between our countries. Now, as you can see, there's a bunch of things here that are affecting it. Mostly the base reluctance is quite harsh, as well as my GDP is quite low. But because we're already trading 22 goods with this faction already, we're actually quite close to letting them accept it. So what I'm going to do... I've already done it. Exporting sugar. Now, if those trade routes upgrade themselves to become bigger... It's going for the sugar one, for instance. So right now... Oh, sorry, level two. Sorry. Depending on the sheer amount of profitability, you can sell more or less 
of a trade route. So if this guy, if America needed like literally 2,000 sugar, I and I had 2,000 sugar to spare, we would probably just trade it between each other. It's all based on the profitability though. Ah, oh, it's kind of upsetting that we're negative two away. <laughs> Damn it. Anyway, events. So, some shopkeepers have expressed opposition to the equal treatment of Afro-Caribbeans. What, what is wrong with these people? People under the cultural exclusion law. Oh, what's to do with my um, thing? Oh, we're screwed. It's a negative event. We're down a 0% success chance. We're going we're gonna to give up on this. It's not working out for us. We got screwed over, everybody. That 0% chance of success is idiot is, is the definition of insanity, everybody. So we're not going to do that. So, what else can we do? What else can we do? So, we've already got some pretty good laws I explained last episode. I would love to get free trade at some point. Because it, it kind of helps other countries come to trade with you. And it makes trading cheaper as well. Because I'm using trading as a means of balancing my economy more, more of a means of making money. So if I want to, I could just make a country that just sells goods to everybody else and we can get loads of tariffs. But I'm not doing that. So if we go for this, is it going to annoy anybody? It's fine. We're trying to get free trade institute uh, added in, which makes my trade routes better, cheaper, and produce more volume. So it's all around a good thing for us in this situation. Though, of course, we will lose the £624 from tariffs, but it should be offset by the increase of goods being sold to and fro. Okay. Excellent. I'm actually going to queue up at some point a paper mill in this region so we can start getting rid of the import route from that other country. Oh, I'm really tempted just to randomly do an trade route. Oh, America's like, we need to trade. <laughs> they understand the situation. America, I agree, buddy. Done. Plus 84. We've done it. We've done it, everybody. And, uh, Colombia and America are strong together, everybody. We're going to take over the universe. Well, actually, they don't really know, but I intend to take over that area as well. But we've got to focus on this part first. And also, having a real ally such as America will mean that we are a lot... Uh, safer in the world. If somebody tries to attack me, Americans will be like, Oi! I'll buy clothes off them, and they're gonna go and kick their ass. So it's perfect. I love this song. I think a lot of the songs in this game are carried over from Victoria 2, because they sound very familiar, or they are the same songs. Okay, this is gonna be great for us. We've actually just increased the coal mine to level 2, which we currently have a massive uh, problem with, with costing. So this should make things a lot cheaper for us. Now, I'm realised that we've reached the halfway point of the episode, so we've got to try and make a move on getting our military up to snuff. Now, unfortunately, we are going to have to wait for the uh, trains to be built, but after that, we are going to build a railway, and also we are going to build an arms factory, which should help us out with both of those things. Now, we've only got 19 weeks left until the motor industry is created, which is unfortunately going to make us have a little bit of issues of market access but i'm sure it'll be fine what we should do is put the railway up to next so in 40 weeks time we will actually have this finished now i did explain earlier that i'm pretty sure that a railway uses 10 engines and the motor industry creates 10 en uh, 40 engines so we're actually going to queue up four railways so we'll put one here uh put one here and we will finally put one here now this will of course mean that these two regions are going to be left alone. But when we get more money, we will expand out the railway network to them as well so we can build more goods. Wait a second. Wait a minute. I have a region here. It's not even incorporated. Everybody. I can't believe this has happened. So an unincorporated state, as you can read here, is kind of got a bunch of negative modifiers. Also, my laws such as consumption tax and taxes in general are not applied correctly in this region. So these people have been living without paying taxes. I can't believe it. Incorporate. Wow. Wow. So, <laughs> incorporating a state varies dramatically based on the cultures of the people that live there. Now, I presume in this situation, as there is not many people that live here of my main culture. Nope, there's actually no one of my main culture living here. Nope, sorry, there's 11%. 
It's going to take 21 years to turn this into a proper state. A long time. Now, we could do various things here, um, such as promoting national values. In theory, if we had a better society, that would mean that people would convert to my culture. Or, a better way of doing it, in my opinion, is that guy naked? He's got, a, he's got a bush, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> what what are you doing, man? Now, the better way of doing it, in my opinion, is that if you build up the region, meaning that people migrate there to live there, you will probably increase the share of your main population to a point where it's cheaper to do so. So we're just going to probably build up this region at some point, because right now there's actually nothing here. It's just 4,000 peasants. Ooh, that was quick. Excellent. And that's immediately given us a bunch of, um, a little bit of a money increase as well. So what do we need right now in our country? What do we need? Um, I want probably something agricultural because it's easy to do. I'm kind of tempted to do fruit. We currently not, don't make any fruit. And fruit is not only a luxury good, but also a basic food need. So it's actually pretty good. And also it's equivalent of 1.5 grain. So it's actually quite efficient. So we do that. That's also why they're unhappy, by the way, because they're living in a state where they haven't really got good income. Because if you've got free land and there's no one, uh, no, like, no other buildings there, they will work in subsistence buildings, which produce a bunch of random goods, but they pretty much off, um, kind of like offset the cost of them living there. So they're kind of just living off the land and like being like basic feudal era people just sitting around. But that also means that they don't get paid any money. So, for instance, the average wage here of a peasant is... How do I see that? I know it's there somewhere. 0 0.8 pounds per year. <laughs> Can you imagine? So, if I go over to one of these places, this rice farm, and we look at the farmer here, they're making 12 to 7 pounds. Yes. <laughs> that is insanely different, everybody. Um, those poor people. Actually, I'm kind of tempted to quickly build this. 11 weeks. We'll wait. We'll wait. I will probably bring it up though, because I want to get those guys being converted as soon as possible so they can be paying their taxes. Ah! I have become level 30 again because I've increased my prestige. I don't know how I've done that though, so a quick look. It's probably from my GDP, and I've also got a popular re uh, commander now. So we actually have, if you haven't noticed, more than doubled our GDP since the start of the game in 10 years. That's pretty powerful. If that happened in real life, you'll be like, how have they done this? <laughs> Inflation's out of control. Now, because we are back to being a minor power again, we can declare interest in another strategic region. So right now, we are interested in Colombia, Central America, and Brazil. Now, I'm going to declare an interest in the Andes. So if there's any wars or any kind of diplomatic play in the region, I will be involved in it in some capacity so I can influence its events. Oh, nice. Better still production. This, I think, is just a better way of doing it. So we're going to put that over right away. Done. Now, this will unfortunately mean for people that work there that it's so efficient, there's too much steel. So they're going to lose some uh, jobs here. But I like efficiency over keeping people's jobs. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> ah, speaking of this, though, this should probably be offset because in a second, we're about to get our first railway. Let's zoom in. And it will also mean... Is that is that it for the railway? <laughs> It goes from here to here, and that's it. Is that seriously it? Oh, that's a sad railway, everybody. That is a sad railway. Uh, that also means that there will now be a demand for engines, making this place more um, powerful as well. Anyway, so we now have the power of the railway. Now, this is actually a subsidized building, so it doesn't matter how efficient the building is, I'm going to be paying for it to be maximum uh, starve at all times, which is quite important because it means you can get the infrastructure. Now, something this does is it uses coal and engines, but it produces transport. Transport can be used in many different buildings, you can see right there, but also it's another general good which is used for free movement and communication. So very useful for general purchase and also for efficiency as well. Now what we are going to do, we're going to change this from privately owned to govern... Oh no, we're not, we're leaving that be. I want capitalists. If you want a certain type of society and you increase more jobs for that society, you'll have a higher chance of getting their support in the um, government. So to explain that in a better way, if I, for instance, can say I want to replace capitalists with priests, then the priests will have more power and the uh, industrialists will have less power. Anyway, so we're going to put this into wooden passenger uh, carriages, which will increase the amount of transportation generated by this building but with a little bit of an increased cost and decrease in employment. 
This will unfortunately mean that we make less infrastructure. Now, the reason I want a lot of transportation is that you can use it in so many buildings. Now, I don't think we actually have a location with a lack of staff right now. But, for instance, we go over here, uh, the random building here. I can actually use transportation trams to reduce the employment. So if you've got problems with the amount of workers you have, you can do this to make your buildings more efficient. Though it doesn't always translate to saving money based on the situation of the building. But what we will do is we will probably make certain buildings change over to being efficient at a time. So for now, we will do urban centers. And we'll also do the farms. Oh! I forgot about this. This is not transportation. This is requiring tools to reduce employment by 500. We should do this as well. Done. Okay, so let's do the coal mine. And the little exclamation points disappear because it's no longer profitable to do so. Or a good idea to do so. Because we've increased the demand quite a bit for transportation already. It should actually now be equal. Which is great because it means they're now making money. And eventually, when the cash reserves fed up, I will actually have to, I will stop losing money from subsidies. It will pay for itself and more back into my economy. It's pretty cool. Oh, can we see a train? Oh, it's so sad. It's literally just carrying one thing. <laughs> I guess when they first created trains, it was probably only, oh, does it have a train? By the way, I just want to point out quickly, um, last episode I recorded, the first one, I actually had performance issues um, while recording. Not while playing the game, just because I was recording as well. I reduced the graphics a bit, so it actually looks a lot better in this in the normal settings I was using before, but um, we've gone down to medium settings, everybody. <laughs> I know, my PC sucks. I thought at 38 we'd be able to play Victoria 3, but apparently not so much. Well, let me just clarify. <clears throat> while recording in 4K, that's a big difference there, massive difference. Done. Paper mills have been created. So this will create, I think, 30 paper? 40. Awesome. So we can get rid of the trade route for paper. And we can get another building producing wages and resources for our little empire here. Done. This, of course, immediately causes a massive problem with our um, government administration, but it will be offset when the building fills up with workers. So you can kind of see at the bottom here, currently we've got a 28% penalty maximum, and it's ticking up from 8%. Uh, as it goes on, it's going down. Sorted. Cool. I actually feel like we should probably get more production speed, but we are going to stick with the original goal of the episode, which is to get the military up first. Because if I keep neglecting the military, we won't be able to expand via military, and also we probably get attacked at some point and be in big trouble. Uh, also, oh wow, we need a lot of clothes. <laughs> Damn! Also, I'm also importing clothes as well, we've got to remember that. I'm pretty interested to see how this is going to change the outlook of this location. Right now they're in turmoil because they haven't got a lot of money. And the sound living wage of this location is impoverished at 10.3. So I presume in a second we're going to see people flood into this building. Already making way more money than before. And that should immediately increase the standard of living. Well, when they will get the job anyway. I kept this went down. <laughs> Damn it, game. You're making me look bad. We'll give it a few seconds. Oh, people are... Oh. Oh, yeah, so depending on how well off people are as well, it also affects the quality of healthcare and education they can afford. If you've got people starving, they will die. If you've got people that are rich, they will probably have like 10 children. So it's a good idea to always have your population being as well off as humanly possible. Um, which is always my thesis with anything I do. A defensive pact with Brazil. Do you know what? I'm going to accept that. It pretty much guarantees I'm not going to be killed by them. Oh, Argentina just killed a native faction. Wow, they've gotten a lot bigger. So you may have noticed from the start of the episode, uh, this region here, I'm going to say from here downwards, was actually not owned by Argentina at the start of the game. They had to colonize down and up. Ooh. Water tube boilers. This is going to be great for us because it means we can increase the efficiency of all our buildings again. And we also get more construct constructions. So we do it from this menu so we don't miss anything. Uh, increase that, that, and I think that's it, isn't it? Yes. So now we make more coal. Excellent. And we also make more iron. Also excellent. Uh, what do we want to pick next, everybody? 
I'm going to go for distillation. So one thing we are missing from our little country right now, which will massively increase income, is intoxication. If you build a food industry, we'll do it at some point, you would actually be able to produce liquor, which is a general good, which is not the same as wine, for instance. It's actually, it could be actually, maybe I'm wrong there, we'll do a quick check. It's not. So these are used by every single population type in the game um, at all levels, and it includes liquor, tobacco, and opium. Now, thing this up will, of course, make people a lot happier, and they will spend more money on uh, items. In did that just say my trade rope broke? It did. It's because we reduced the trade a little bit, so it offset the um, thing there. It's a shame. But it's okay, because we still have a lot of um, bureaucracy anyway, so it's not a big deal. Now, as I was playing by myself uh, the other day, I actually had a massive trade with England and they broke the trade deal. When I went down to negative 200 <laughs> bureaucracy, which made me have like negative 70% tax income. So depending on the situation, that could be very bad. But it is what it is. But anyway, so this would make us start making liquor, which would be very powerful. Because uh, right now we're not making enough at all. And also you can make sweeteners using sugar, which you're not currently using, that will create Groceries. Groceries are a luxury good, as well as a basic food, which is equivalent to more than grain and fish. So pretty handy. Anyway, let's carry on with the game, shall we? Now, I need to do... Oh, water boiler also came within a way of increasing efficiency again by using coal to offset people working in a building. We will do this, but when we have more coal mines later on. Okay, we've got a few weeks left, and I think at the moment, because how we set everything up at the moment, we should already have enough money to increase um, inventory, uh, not inventory, line inventory and artillery at the same time with at least 15,000 units. Oh, cool! Now we've got logs as well. This changes, by the way, based on what you're transporting. So if we go over to England, they have sulfur, they have coal, uh, more coal, iron... Um, I guess this transport goods. Oh, oh this is so cool. Look at I love, I love this game. <laughs> you also got the ships as well, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty sure as type, the map, by the way, is quite amazing. As you build buildings, it changes the environment and stuff. So if we go back to my place, uh, I built a farm, didn't I? Oh, we can't see it here, unfortunately. Uh, oh, no, there's, there's some farms we've built up there. As you build more stuff, it will change the map to reflect that. So we're, if here we have a coal mine, it's pretty awesome. Though it's a shame that I can't play on maximum graphics. <laughs> Damn it, YouTube. Ruining my immersion. So we have built the arms industry. Currently, it has no input whatsoever because no one's using the goods. So if we go over to buildings, development, and we increase line inventory up, and we also increase mobile artillery, we're going to start losing money, but also it means that these buildings here will start working to full capacity. I'm pretty sure we've got a little bit of a problem here, because we're not going to be producing enough hardwood. Uh, how much does it require? Ten. We need to increase wood production somewhere. Let's do it here. Yeah, we do it here. Done. Also, let's queue up another tool factory as well. Okay, so now we've done that. You're going to see that my rank has jumped up to 26 because we now have more prestige from having a larger military. And also, my guys are going to slowly start um, actually becoming better at fighting. So I mentioned it, I think, last episode, but if you do switch stuff around, there is a period of time where you have an equipment adjustment, which means that you do not want to really switch over stuff in the middle of wars because it could be quite detrimental to your military power. Because right now we should be stuck at way higher than we are, but it is what it is. Anyway, so what I'm going to be doing now... Excellent. We are going to start looking into expansion, everybody. Now... I think the best case scenario to start here is going to be to take out Central America. So I'm actually going to tell my guys to damage relations with every kingdom or every country in this region. Um... So over time, we can attack them. Luckily for us, we already have the uh, opportunity to attack um, Costa Rica because they already hate us enough that we can do it. Now, as you can see right now, there's a bunch of things happening with diplomatic plays. There are a bunch of countries that are involved in the region. 
So it says right here, you, oh, oh, is it not going to, wait, 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 there you go, perfect. Um, you can see there's a bunch of re countries in the region that may join either side in the play and there's already one that will definitely join our enemy side which is mexico i presume it's because they've either protected them or they got some kind of deal with them so defensive pats there you go now this is going to be quite interesting for us because this guy is going to be in good for us so we already know that we have a good relation with america if i join a war against costa rica then America will be in the region of interest and I can sway them to my side by promising them uh, a war goal from Mexico. Because right now, wow, can we just point out, Mexico went ham. They captured loads of the territory. <laughs> yeah, so America is going to be very interested in probably taking on Mexico because they're hostile and it's their main rival. So it'd be very easy to bring them to my side. I'm not going to do that if we don't have to, by the way. I'm pretty sure my military should be able to beat Mexico by itself. Um, because they've only got 10,000 regular units and 20,000 conscripts. It should be fine. Anyway, so that is all working out for us. We now have a maximum building for this. I'm actually going to increase this again. So we, we can afford 30,000 men. Uh, which also should mean that I should increase the logging camp again as well. Elsewhere. Done. Cool. We've got fruit. So this is what we built the building earlier. Uh, what is the standard of living now in this location? 14.6. If you remember before, it was, I think, 10.6. So that has massively increased the people that are living here's standard of living. And I think maybe migration? There's no migration. That, and the guy's still naked, though. Just want to point that out. He's still naked. <laughs> he will never be unnaked. Police, uh, police brutality. This is a quite interesting event I always get. So when you start getting dedicated police, people are unhappy about that. So you can ignore them and you can get 5% of low, low strata pops in a region become a radical and get relations with a certain faction. Or you can do the reverse, reducing the institution level by one, but increasing relations with rural folk and in, uh, the boffins. Now, this is a interesting thing because it just means I put it back up again. <laughs> I don't lose anything. From that situation, really. It's just a, it's an easy one to get, take care of. Do you know what we haven't done in ages, everybody? Is some kind of political system. Now, i got to be honest. The laws we already have are already pretty good. So, I, there's not much need to do it all the time. But, should we do another attempt at cultural exclusion? Or, do we want to try and defeat the state religion? I'm going to go for this one first, because we have a lot of discriminated pots in our country. Let's give that a shot. Done. Oh, do you know what we could have done as well? While I'm here. We do not need road maintenance anymore. That is sorted out. So we actually have a spare 126 income right now we can spend on something. I'm probably going to... How do we want to deal with this? I'm kind of tempted to put increase migration rate here so that people will migrate here to reduce the let's try it there's a way you can find what the migration pool is ah oh, there it is high migration it is actually the highest migration pool in the entire country which means immediately 26,000 people have migrated to this location so the reason i'm doing this is because i want my main population to migrate to this uh, place so that we can actually get ourselves quicker integration into our main country that's the plan anyway so who's moving in ah it looks like it's my main culture the andeans perfect cool <laughs> i'll take it it probably means that we need to also invest in ah oh, we can't though damn it oh it's got a negative modifier from being in the amazon rainforest so that's not very helpful oh oh we have more trains they're so beautiful I kind of wish that they add up to like the other, I think they will eventually. Ah, I'll tell you what, in a second, in four weeks, we're going to get an extra one here. And it may connect up my main regions together, maybe? We'll have to see. I'm not really sure right now, but we'll find out in a second. Okay, also, we're now ranked 23, which is pretty cool. And if we go check our military right now, I'm going to be pretty sure that they are going to be at near maximum fighting power way better than before okay so what we're going to do next is we're still doing a bunch of construction here we need some more tools and paper as well 
Let's bring up the tools now to get it out of the way. Oh, did that work by the way? <gasps> yes! Yes! The trains go from here, they go to there, and they go back around, and they go down. Okay, I'm a nerd. <laughs> it's so cool though! Look how cool this is! Look. I can't help myself, okay? I think it's cool, don't judge me. <laughs> Every region needs a train so we can see how cool it is on the map, everybody. That can be one of our objectives in the future. Should we? We'll do a war next episode, everybody. That can be our next thing. So I feel like we've done, we kind of done our jobs for this episode, everybody. We kind of done what I set out to do. We have 20 build speed and we have a military being formed. The downside is that we are losing money, unfortunately, at the moment, which is not great. But it's mostly because we're subsidizing all these train yards. Now, I did mention earlier, if the train yards are making money, they actually offset their costing. Now, because I've been distracted by various things, I've forgotten about it. We are currently making way too much transportation again. So if we go back to the market building uh, menu again, and we literally just... Uh, where is it? This is the wrong one. This is urban. This is what I want to be at. If we increase the amount of rail transport being used in our country, we'll increase the price of... Damn. We increase the price of transportation, making the railways profitable. Branching out successful. Cool. We'll take it. Uh, I'm trying to find the railway. Give me a second. There it is. Done. They are now making money again, which immediately should reduce the cost. Actually, in this building, it's actually meaning that we make money. I'm not spending anything on subsidies, and the additional money is going into the assets for reserves and investment pools. Well, it should be anyway. Oh, wait, sorry. The reason I got no investment pool right now is because they're currently assisting in building the building here. I'm currently getting 1.99k investment pool transfer from my established businesses and building more businesses in my country. What is this? Rail world. Ooh, rail. <laughs> rail world. The growth of branching lines across the main rail routes has been immensely valuable for the growth of our budgeting rail industry. So I can increase the throughput. I can increase the motor throughput. Or I can get uh, increase in steel railway cars. Before we click this button, let me just double check. It's already available. Excellent. Free technology. I'll take it. Done. Low market access in this location. Oh, did I... Oh, we're not building anything here. I probably should be more careful with this because I kind of just ignored it. So Panama already is sorted. Panama is about to be given a railway in the future. I like how... I wonder where the Panama Canal could be created, everybody. It could be built anywhere. Literally anywhere. I can't figure it out. <laughs> uh, we're, we're probably going to do then. At some point in the future, I'm going to queue up having an additional motor industry. <gasps> oh, no, that's fine. Sorry, I thought I had additional ones. I, I was wrong. Don't worry about it. We're going to queue that up, and we're going to then increase the railway network in our two additional regions as well. Done. Okay. Everybody, apart from that, I think it's safe to say that is going to be today's episode. At the end of each episode, I just want to quickly say um, we're going to go around the world a little bit. I just want people to see what's happening in the rest of the planet. So, we currently have a situation where America's kind of been split in three. The tribes have pretty much been defeated. Uh, there is a small tribe left in the Columbia district, but it's about to be a uh, destroyed, I imagine. Russia still owns... Um, Antarctica. I wonder when they buy that in history. Uh, looks like a, in my part of the world, though, we, we've already seen it just by playing the game. Anyway, Peru and Bolivia have created a joint country becoming more powerful in the region. Um, if we go elsewhere, there's a bunch of um, basic colonization starting. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look around, Russia is colonizing Kenya. <laughs> uh, France is colonizing um, Central Africa and as well as Great Britain. In, ooh, in Europe, Italy has been formed. Originally, that wasn't in the map at the start of the game. And Prussia, to me, looks like they've gotten a little bit bigger, but not too much. Uh, as part from that, Egypt has started to lose territory to the Ottoman Empire. What else has happened that we can probably figure out? It looks like that's normal. I think this is all regular around here. There has been some expansion of the Dutch in the Indonesian sphere. As well as more colonization in, um, <laughs> I'm an idiot, Australia. <laughs> What's that place called? I have no idea. But everybody, apart from that, thank you for watching. As always, please like, subscribe, and comment below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.